Here are 10 ways to make your home look and feel cheap. First, let's clarify what I mean by the word cheap, where I'm not talking about a home being inexpensive. This is because a home that's filled with costly furniture can still look clumsy, tacky and awkward, ironically giving off a cheap vibe if it's poorly curated and organised. Whereas on the other hand, a more modestly furnished home can look more refined and, well, expensive if it's more thoughtfully curated, where the main difference lies in the techniques used to arrange and style the space and not the price of the items themselves which means these are skills that anyone can learn. So to start, a surefire way to make your home look cheap is to skip measuring your room or the furniture you plan to put in it. And while this may seem quite obvious, it's surprisingly easy to assume that you know the size of something based on past experiences or how it looks online or how big it seems to feel in the showroom. So the best way to ensure that everything in your room fits together perfectly is to map out its layout using tape. But sometimes, even when limited space isn't an issue, you bring something home and it just looks off. And this often comes down to proportions, which is something that can be hard to gauge without the help of some good old-fashioned tape. Of course, it's true that all the best looking and expensive homes are all inhabited with furniture and finishes that have the nicest of materials. So this also might feel a little bit counterintuitive when I say that if you're on a budget, one of the best ways to make your home look cheap is to try and replicate this. So if materials like solid walnut or marble are simply out of your budget, much like they are mine, you may try to bring these into your home using faux materials. So if you can't afford a solid walnut or even a walnut veneer table, you may be tempted to go for a printed laminate version. Or if you can't afford marble countertops in your kitchen, you might be tempted to go for printed laminate instead too. However, I'd like to make the case that cheaper materials like laminate that are honest by not trying to look like something else actually look better. So instead of printed marble or timber laminate, you could accept that these materials are actually out of your budget and embrace using solid coloured laminate instead. Or instead of choosing a walnut veneer table, you might choose a solid stained birch table instead, which has the added benefit of handling wear and tear much better as it can be refinished. And even though some people may not be able to tell the difference up close, to you it's still going to feel cheap and you're always going to know subconsciously at the back of your mind that this fakery is all a little bit pretentious, even if this wasn't your original intention when you bought it. Where in my opinion, honesty always looks best on both us and our homes. So seeing as we know that fakery often tends to feel cheap, another great way to achieve this is by completely ignoring context. So let me explain a little bit what I mean by this. Imagine the most beautiful home that you've ever visited was a coastal cabin during a vacation way back in 2004. It can seem perfectly logical to try and recreate that vibe in your own home, drawing inspiration from shiplap timber, coastal trinkets, blue hues and aquatic decor that you all loved so much when you were there. However, if you live in an apartment in the middle of a city, trying to recreate a coastal vibe is a guaranteed way to make your space feel cheap, because you're missing out one key element, which is the coast. So by forcing a beachy aesthetic into a home that completely disregards its urban setting, the result is a home that feels out of place and frankly a bit tacky. And really the same principle applies to any theme that you might love. So if you ignore your home's location or its existing features, the result can come across as quite whimsical and probably not in the way that you want if you're serious about design. That said, if you are a genuinely playful person and you want your home to reflect this, do feel free to completely disregard this advice, as embracing kitsch design is completely valid if it suits your personality. However, the key is to simply be intentional with it so it doesn't come off as cheap. Otherwise, it risks feeling a bit like a joke that no one gets, as you're not clear enough that you're telling one. 
For example, going all in on a Harry Potter themed home could be a great business idea if you're thinking of turning your home into a novelty Airbnb, whereas a half-hearted attempt might just end up feeling a little bit cringy, which is only going to cause it to become destined to fail. Another way to make a space feel soulless is through its layout. And while open plan designs are often praised for providing flexibility and enhancing natural light by removing internal walls, they can also create a sense of overwhelming disarray by blurring the lines between distinct areas. For instance, an open plan living space typically combines the living, dining and kitchen areas and sometimes even a small workspace. However, this merging together of zones can tend to confuse our subconscious by making it difficult to discern how each space is supposed to function independently, especially for guests who are not yet familiar with the layout. And so one effective way to mitigate this confusion is simply by using rugs to define distinct zones and areas to create clear pathways between the different spaces. So by placing a rug beneath your living room furniture, this acts like a visual anchor, tying the elements together and making the room easier to navigate. And additionally, arranging your furniture to highlight logical pathways between them can enhance the flow between the different spaces. And by softening hard corners with strategically placed pieces, this can further reduce these visual barriers, allowing our brains to navigate the area a bit more intuitively. And by using simple tricks, such as selecting furniture with legs or pulling your furniture pieces slightly away from your walls, this can also create the illusion of more space, making the environment feel a little bit more open and inviting. Now, it's true that beautiful homes are always impeccably staged, so it's easy to fall into the trap of wanting to fill your space with decorative items. However, one of the biggest mistakes is opting for open shelving when you really need storage cabinets, as you're simply so eager to display all of your Pinterest-inspired finds like a Tom Ford book, a scented candle, and some chain link decor, while all of your everyday clutter simply gets shoved aside until the novelty fades and those items slowly creep back onto every available surface. Now, even though storage is useful, it is very tempting to assume that by thinking about it later, you can focus on your vision and inspiration in the meantime. And due to the fact that spending money on more beauty can feel like the easiest way to achieve a magazine-worthy home, especially when compared to the hard work of organizing and establishing a functional hierarchy for all of your most used items, ironically, it's usually the boring hidden elements that truly maintain a home's beauty in the real world, where when it comes to most people, you're usually better off focusing on what items you can hide rather than the ones that you can put on display, as this can help to emphasize the main items of merit in your home rather than distract from them. Another great way to make your home feel off is by focusing too much on appreciating items in isolation, without considering how they coordinate with the rest of your space. Now don't get me wrong, if you truly love something, you shouldn't let an irrelevant architect on the internet dictate your choices because it doesn't match with the rest of your home. However, continuing with this approach can lead to a rather perplexing dilemma if you tend to only buy items that you fall in love with without thinking about how they really fit in with your overall decor. Sure, you may have heard about colour theory and the principles of choosing complementary and analogous colours, but if you're okay with your home looking cheap, you shouldn't let these guidelines restrict you from acquiring the pieces that you truly desire. And while you might recognize that certain designs evoke specific eras or styles, many stunning interiors simply embrace an eclectic mix, and you may well choose to adopt this approach as well. Then to have even more fun with it, you might start doing things like adding in a cool bulb amongst warm ones on a three light pendant fixture. Or if some areas of your home feature gold hardware like door handles, you might start introducing a touch of chrome here and there. And ultimately, by purchasing the items that you genuinely love, the idea is that you'll create a home that you've always envisioned. However, oftentimes, all it ends up being is a rather inconsistent and dissonant jumble. 
Now, if you're more of a minimalist like me, you might be prone to falling into the opposite trap, which is to make sure that everything matches. As to relieve some of the pressure of failure, it can feel much safer to buy items that coordinate perfectly, so you end up with the exact same style, colour and material for nearly every item of furniture in your home. So, buying a dining table and chairs? Make sure they're from the same retailer and have the same finish. Getting a sofa and armchair? Stick with the matching suite. And the same thing goes for living room tables, lamps and artwork. And by doing this, you play it safe to avoid committing to riskier purchases that don't match, or things like artwork that might not go with everything else. And this way, by conversely not following your instincts, you create a flat, soulless home devoid of the distractions of all of your past creative decisions and any personality. Chances are that your home already comes with ceiling lights, but assuming that you don't have to think about lighting because of this is actually another great way to make your home feel flat and uninspired. This is because ceiling lights, despite lighting a room very efficiently, usually provide an unflattering hard light because they're simply so small and placed in or on the ceiling, casting hard shadows throughout the space that all come from a very intense singular light source, which ends up creating an atmosphere that lacks dimension and warmth. But seeing as most people keep a lamp or two to at least bring up the brightness levels, while somewhat alleviating this one dimensionality, this introduces another mistake, which is mismatched lighting temperatures. But what still blows my mind is that now you can get a whole host of dimmable smart bulbs placed in separate fixtures on completely unrelated electrical circuits all around the room, synced up to one wireless master switch, which allows you to control a room's brightness and temperature without having to go around and adjust every single lamp at its switch, which can allow you to control multiple fixtures all at once with ease to stop a room from feeling flat by creating a warm and inviting environment. Now on this channel, I like to emphasize the fact that good design is generally rooted in the principle of form following function. And while it might make sense to prioritize functionality, it is easy to assume that certain items with minimal utility are somewhat unnecessary. For example, if you already have a family photo as your phone's wallpaper, you might question the need for physical family photos around your home. And if you're a minimalist, you may find the idea of keeping family furniture a little bit impractical, especially if it doesn't align with your overall vision for the space. Following this line of thinking, collections of art, pottery and prints can seem superfluous. Keeping the walls bare might feel more functional, reducing clutter and making the space feel brighter. However, adhering too strictly to the less is more philosophy can strip a home of its soul, leaving it feeling more like a cheap furniture showroom. And while it's easy to go overboard with sentimental items or oversized family photos, removing all personality is equally unwise. However, the gist of what I'm trying to say is that your home should naturally reflect your tastes and values, otherwise it risks losing its essence and not feeling like your home at all. And so if you struggle with indecisiveness too, it might be time to start trying to be a little bit more adventurous with your purchases too. With so many things only improving with age and thrifting quite rightly being all the rage now, it's easy to assume that embracing the worn in shabby chic look will make your home feel more expensive, but it can have quite the opposite effect. So one of the simplest and easiest ways to make your home feel cheap is to not bother doing things like fixing crooked cabinet doors or blinds and to let fabrics wear thin and allow your fixtures to become sun bleached. And then when you spot something like a scuff or a scratch, don't bother patching it up, thinking this all adds to character, so it's simply not worth the hassle of fixing. Additionally, it's also easy to believe that these details are simply too insignificant for most people to notice. But if you're aiming for a wabi-sabi aesthetic, it works best when worn items are celebrated thoughtfully, which means that they still need to be well presented. 
For example, old or scuffed kitchen handles or light fixtures can look fantastic in a well-maintained kitchen or living area, but if these items lack value or design merit to begin with, or they're paired with an equally blemished environment, this result can be less charming and more run down. Which might explain why thrifted furniture doesn't always hit the mark quite as you had expected. And really, sometimes the fix you need is simply a little bit of maintenance, where spending a weekend painting over your home's old magnolia walls or swapping out outdated switches and hardware can make a much bigger impact than you might first expect. But finally, whether you're optimizing your layout or ensuring that your home reflects your unique style, don't entertain the thought that your budget is what defines the quality of your space, as an inexpensive home can easily outshine one twice the cost when it's designed with more care and creativity. And if you enjoyed this video, YouTube also thinks you might enjoy this next one too.